Assalamu and peace or welcome to Dawa Dude. Here is another interesting uh, short clip. Uh, Hamza in Kuala Lumpur meets uh, with the Dutch couple. They call themselves agnostic. Ad- Hamza addressed uh, issues of uh, existence of God with the contingency argument. And also he talks about the design inference and objective morality and limitation of science. So very interesting uh, uh, topics he discuss and you will enjoy it. Uh, please uh, uh, share, like and um, um, <coughs> subscribe to my channel too and um, subscribe Hamza Dan also for uh, uh, beautiful videos. Jazakallah khair. <laughs> <laughs> well, why would a creator need a creator? Uh, I don't know, but I think as you uh, follow the logical uh, aspect to what you said. It would be the way. Sorry? It, it, it would, it would just, just... You going, yeah? Uh, it would be the other way. I'll explain why. If you understand what the nature of the creator is, yes. the creator is what we call the necessary thing yeah. for all to exist. Yeah. Yeah? So we have contingency and we have necessary. So everything is necessary. Sorry, everything is contingent. Yeah. Everything is contingent upon something else. By contingent, I mean it doesn't have to be the way it is, and it relies on something else and needs an explanation for its existence. Yeah. For, for there to be contingent things, there needs to be something necessary to be the cause of those contingent things. Yeah. Because if a contingent thing is dependent and made up of dependent things, it's not independent. So we need something independent that's not yeah. based upon something like that. You understand? Or you get the problem of infinite regression. So when we come to this necessary thing, because it's necessary, necessary things can only be one way and don't need an explanation. So there has to be something. There has to be something. So the question we need to ask, what is that something? Yeah. That, that, that's where we have to start. Yeah. Okay. So right now, where are you guys from? Netherlands. The Netherlands. Yeah. Okay, that's right. I'm from, I'm from the UK. Yeah. I'm just visiting here. Um, so right now, what do you believe? I mean, we don't believe anything. So you don't believe in anything. Well, well as I just told her. Yeah, I, yeah sorry, I wasn't. Clear. I'm, I'm not sure there's God, so I don't have enough proof for me that there is one. But I also can't say there is not a God. Right. So, so you can't I kind just, of agnostic on it. I accept that I just don't know. It. Okay. So how would you explain existence? Yeah, I just don't have the explanation for it. But I no, no, but I just don't know. Oh, okay. So what if I give you? Um, Evidence of God. Yeah, then I, I would believe it. You would believe it. Yeah. And what would you accept as evidence? Yeah, something. Science. Uh, science. Science. Oh, uh, science. Science, science. Science is good. Science. Yeah, but also, uh, uh, we said, uh, Do you think science is a good way to gain yeah, information? Probably, but also your science is like yeah, if you can. You, you think so? Important. Shall I show you how weak science is? Yeah, I know. I studied psychology. Shall I show you how weak it is? I know how weak it is. Well, I'm gonna. But I also well, let me show you how weak it is. I'm going to give you a story now. I want an analogy. Yeah? And you can only use science to answer the question. Yeah? yeah, yeah all right, all right. You're walking in the woods yeah. in Malaysia, and you come across a cottage. Yeah. And you go in the cottage, and there's a kitchen, and on the kitchen, there's a, ta- there's a table. Yeah. And on that table is a cake. Yeah? yeah? Using science, tell me who made the cake and why. Keep using science. Come on, you said. Yeah, you can say. You, 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 there's no one in the cottage, right? So you've got, how can you ever know who made the cake? You can't. Science can't help you. Uh, why the cake was made? Science can't help you. So science is so limited in what you can do. What, what science can do is identify a cake yeah. and, and basically uh, see what it's made of. Was constructed from because oh this has been the result of heat and it's expanded or whatever it may be. Yeah. So that's a science we use for our. So science can only tell you what something is, yeah. not how it is and why it is. No. Agreed? Yeah, yeah. All right, right, right. So science is limited in what it can do. Now the second thing is, do you know who invented the scientific method of deduction? Uh, yeah. Yes. Russell. Russell. No. If you say it, I just... I know. You won't, if I say it, you won't recognize it. Yeah. 
No? Oh. Don't recognize her. Ibn Hayf. Oh. The Muslim. And of course then Thomas Aquinas and whatever. Yeah. But it started with whom? Ibn Hayf. A Muslim. Okay. So from just this point alone, religion doesn't have a problem with science. It's, if you look at all the scientists of the past, it was theism, it was the belief in God that used science to try to understand what God has done. So science, I agree with you, it could be used to identify things, but it can't be used to understand the reasons how and why. So why the universe is here, how the universe is here, it can't give you the explanations. It can try to investigate the universe, what it is, what it's made up of, galaxies, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it can't tell you its origination and its purpose. It, it's so limited. Yeah, I, it's, you, you get that, yeah, right? So science ain't going to help us when we're trying to look at these kind of things. Yeah, that's why. We, we, we need some connection. But, but I like science. I like science. I, I, I'll, I'll explain why. Because it's true. We can, we can look at science and we can utilize things. Now, have you ever heard of something called the design inference? You're analyzing me now, you're a psychologist, right? I'm a psychologist, oh my god, you think this guy's with so much confidence. No, 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 no. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, it, this, this, yeah, this guy seems to be so sure of what he's saying. All right, there anyway. you Have you heard of the design inference? The design inference. All right, so what the design inference is, is how would you identify if something is a product of design or it's just natural? Yeah. Yeah? So... There was a guy called Dembski. It's called Dembski's uh, Design Inference. He was a mathematician, philosopher. Yeah. And he came up with a system to determine something that's designed or not. And the first quality for something to be potentially the product of design is what's called contingency. You know what we spoke about contingency? Yeah. So contingency, you know what, sometimes you're going to do something, you say we've got a contingency plan, so yeah. if this doesn't work, we're going to do this instead. Yeah. Okay. So what contingency means, is it doesn't have to be this way, it could be another way. Yeah. Or it's not a result of natural regularity. So these are, these are the two things we look at. So, for example, we, you walk in the beach, you see these glasses. Just for example, we're going to use Dempsey's design inference on these glasses. Um, could these glasses have been another way? Did they have to be this way? Did they have to be black? Could they have been red? Could they have been no. star-shaped? They, they, yeah. they could have been anything. Yeah. It just so happens they're this way. Yeah. Okay. So, using Dempsey's design inference, it passes test number one, it's contingent. Okay, test number two, is it complex? So we look at it now again, we're like, yeah, it looks like a combination of different materials seem to be molded, seems to have these little things here that um, seem to protect, yeah? yeah? So you say, yeah, it's, it's pretty complex. You're not expecting that gonna form itself on a beach, agreed? So this ticks the box of design inference number two. Third uh, test is, is it specific to a purpose, yeah? And yes, because the glass has got like this thing, so you can see, yeah, it's specific. So we can say, using density design inference, that this is product of design. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. We can use this for anything. Now, for example, a snowflake or a rock salt or is very, very complex. It looks, you know, the crystals and all that. But that would fail, number one. Could it be any other way? No. Sodium and chloride make salt. That's all it's going to do. And it's a result of natural regularity. So we wouldn't need then to see, is it complex or is it, it would stop. So now we have a tool, scientific tool, to measure things by. Now I'm going to bring the smoking gun, DNA. Yeah? Is DNA contingent? Yeah. Is it complex? Yeah. Is it specific? Yes. Purpose. So it has a designer. Oh, the, yeah. So anything that's a product of design requires a designer. Yeah. Who's the designer? Yeah, we don't know. But we... No, no, no. Who is the designer? Does it need a designer? Yeah, it needs a designer. Okay. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, that's... We don't know. So we have to consider, is there a designer? And because this DNA cannot be a result of natural regularity based upon its contingency, its um, complexity and specificity. Okay? So now, what do we do? Science at this point closes the book because they know the answer is the creator. You understand? But for you, if you're honest enough, well, wait a minute. Why am I going to now start special pleading when I know whenever I see 
evidence of design, there must be a designer. But I would agree with you with that. Yeah, with that. Uh, with that. Right, right, right. So if there's a designer, what kind of designer could it be? I can't imagine. But we, we put the potential now that there could be a creator. Yeah, of course. And this would probably explain why there's so many different people around the world who believe in this creator. Okay. Now, let's say there's a creator. What qualities would this creator need to possess to create what's been created? Very good question. <laughs> well, no, no. Well, do you know of anything powerful enough to create a universe, for example? Do you know of anything? So it needs to be powerful. Yeah. And if you look at what's in the, within the universe, there must be some kind of intelligence. Yeah. And if you look at the knowledge of the outcome, there must be knowledge. So we're already attributing these, these factors, right? But the question is this, because it's, it's a big leap now. Because, okay, you could turn around, because this is what I was being atheist, right? And when I get these kind of questions, I was like, you know what? I concede. There must be a query. What that is, I don't know. Forget religion, man-made stuff, I'm not interested. Yeah. Or do you at least concede there could be a creator? Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 I agree. We, we can say it. Yeah. And, and this is, and I'm, I'm basically writing a book at the moment based upon the idea of DNA and the DNA enigma, mm -hmm. because it is the smoking gun to the evidence. Oh, where's the evidence? Yeah. Yeah. And just another little thing, just a little side swipe on science. Yeah. People who are atheists, they believe that they have this empirical evidence, you know, this empirical. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but the people who claim this haven't done any experiments. So where's the empirical evidence? There isn't. Okay. Third thing, sorry, the whole philosophy of science is based upon something called the uniformity of nature. Yeah, uniformity of nature is the idea that the laws of the universe will act the same everywhere and yeah, at all yeah, time. Yeah? yeah. This is a belief. This is not proven. This can't be proven. It's axiomatic. Yeah. So, so, as a, so, so to be an atheist, you have to believe in scientists, scientism, and scientism is based upon a belief of uniformity of nature. So it's not as strong as it thinks it is. And just another slap of science. Science, philosophy of science says you cannot discover absolutes using science. Yeah, you can only discover uh, the best explanation today, which could be refuted tomorrow. Yeah. Just as the steady state universe was replaced with an expanding universe. A further discovery. So what was known in science at one point as truth or reality ceased to be. Newtonian physics being replaced by Einstein physics. Okay, so this is what happened. Anyway, all right, so we've got this idea now. Now the question I have to ask is this. If there is a creator, would you agree that it would be the source of supreme guidance and objective morality? <laughs> Now, not, I'm going to translate. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, the fact is, also I have to know where the creator is. Yeah. What? Zou de bedoel niet? Zij dingen moeten volgen. Iets van moraliteit. Als je er echt geloof. Ja. Ja, dat weet ik. Ja, zo. Ja, dus zeg maar als we bijvoorbeeld. Ja. Yeah. I mean, any, any, you ask it again? I'll, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make an easier example. Sorry, is your English a bit? No, it's, it's okay, fine, but, but my English is very fast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I'll give you an example. This phone. Who would know best how to operate this phone? Yeah, designer. Samsung. Yeah. They created it. Okay. So who would know best? What's best for you? Probably the creator. Yeah. No, we have. We, 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 don't don't get me wrong. We've we've we've. It's only a potential here at the moment. Yeah. yeah. But if that creator exists, it would be the source of supreme guidance because it created us. Yeah. Agreed? Yeah. Okay, I'm doing that. And the source of objective morality. So it would be the, the thing that would know what is right and wrong for us. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Well, there's only four types of morality we can do. You know that, don't you? Are the, the four types. Do you know the four types? One, one, let's see. Oh, I won't put you on the spot, don't worry. There's four types of morality. Yeah. There's moral skepticism, yeah. moral realism, yeah. moral relativism, and nihilism. Uh, okay. uh, oh, yeah. So nihilism is the atheistic position. There's nothing inherently good or bad. There's nothing inherently right or wrong. Now, the problem with that model 
is it's also a deterministic model. So, for example, people in history like Hitler didn't do wrong, yeah, and they didn't choose to eat whatever they did. They had to do it. It was determined. This is this is atheistic model. But we're all bacteria. We're all just chain reacting. No, there's not directing, and it's, so there's no free will, and nothing's wrong or right. This is nihilism. Yeah. This is disgusting philosophy. Then your moral relativism, which is more reasonable. So what moral relativism is is morality will be based on your culture and society of the day. That will decide what's right and wrong. Yeah. Moral skepticism is when you don't know what's right and what's wrong, or you can't be sure of what could be right and what could be wrong. And then moral realism is the idea of objective morality, that what's right and what's wrong yeah. will e equate everywhere. Yeah. Whether you're in Malaysia, whether you're in Netherlands, whether in the UK, whether in the US, yeah. the standard is the same. Yeah. Okay. If God created us, yeah. his standard of morality yeah. would be objective morality. Our morality, moral relativism, skepticism and such, is all subjective, yeah. based upon how we feel. Whereas objective morality, like it or not, it is where it is. Yeah. So do you agree that this creator would be the source of objective morality and um, supreme guidance? If we agree with it. If you agree with that. If you agree the creator exists and he's the one who created everything, including us, and he would be the one that would know what makes us tick, he would be the one that knows what's good for us, what's bad for us, yeah. What's right and what's wrong? If you disagree, I don't mind you can disagree, no, but I'm no. going to question why you disagree. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the I problem. Don't, yeah, I want to express myself well, but... Well, you study psychology, so I know. <laughs> yeah, but I just feel like we're so different that it wouldn't be possible that there's one thing... In what sense? There. In what sense? That could... Okay, I'll make it easy. Is it right to kill and eat your baby? Uh, no. All right, everyone would agree. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, what is it you think? Why Why do you not think God would know what's good, or right or wrong for everyone? Well, it's not like the big things, like killing someone. Okay, well, give me an example of something else then. Some ways there is a... Give me an example, give me an example. And in some ways... Give, give, give me an example where a, a, a universal morality wouldn't work. Universal one? Well, that's what objective morality yeah, is. Yeah, okay, all the universal ones. Because, no, no, no. Yeah, forget okay, the no, no. Yeah. Forget the the known universal yeah, ones today. Yeah, I'm talking okay. about all morality. Yeah. yeah. So when something's wrong, it's wrong. So for example, this is not maybe not the greatest example because sometimes this will get the backs of people who are not believers. Yeah. Drinking alcohol mm -hmm. is wrong, and it should be wrong everywhere. Right. And that's what the creator says. Yeah? And the reason the creator says that because he can see the results of alcohol. Yeah. You can see the result of alcohol dependency, yeah. drunk drivers, yeah. the liver damage, the break of a family, all of this kind of stuff is a result of alcohol. People lose their minds, all of these things. Yeah. But is it like the same with all unhealthy drinkers? No, no. Because alcohol changes the state of mind. So you're not the same person. Doesn't like very unhealthy also change their state. No, no, don't get me wrong. Look, if you, if you go to the ins and outs, we're told as yeah. Muslims to um, a third of your uh, leave a third of your belly stomach empty. Don't overfill yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're told to eat health. We're not told to eat things. Uh, that's why we have guidance and restrictions in what we eat and things like that. That's why we fast every year and yeah. all of these may come into the play. But the point I'm saying about alcohol, it changes the state of mind. Yeah. How many? Oh yeah, I was drunk. I didn't know. So we know it, it, it changes the state, yeah. after all drugs. So it changes the reality of a person. Yeah. And somebody could be in an innocent, not drinking alcohol, but be a victim of someone else drinking alcohol. Because I'll give you an example. Me, right, I've not always been a Muslim. So I've been in clubs, right? And there was one particular alcoholic drink. If I drank this before I went to the club, it was called 2020. Disgusting taste in alcohol, but it, it, it was very effective. Yeah. If I ever drank this, I would have a fight. I would have a, I don't know why, this particular drink, if I went to a nightclub after drinking that, I'm going to fight someone. Now, whether that became a placebo effect, or I've drunk 2020, who am I going to fight with today? I don't know. But the point I'm saying to you is, if I wasn't drinking, I wouldn't have it happened. So what I'm also saying is that it's not necessarily you drinking alcohol that's going to become a victim of someone. You might hit by a drunk driver. Yeah? So I'm just giving one example of something that's 
universe, which according to us as Muslims, and according to what God says, this thing is poison. Gambling is poison. Yeah? Sexual immorality is poison. Now you might not agree with this because obviously cultures play a part, moral yeah. relativism plays a part. But what we're talking about, who knows best, us or God, if a creator exists? It's all hypothetical, remember? It's all hypothetical. Like, when the definition like sexual immorality, what, what's that? Uh, sex outside of marriage. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. You, you, using girls to put as you like yeah. to satisfy yourself. Someone's daughter, you take them, you don't offer them security or nothing, you just use it. Yeah. So, that's what I would say. Obviously, LGBT people fits into that category. Yeah. It does, it does. Yeah. Like, Who are you? No, no. Okay, if we had this conversation 50 years ago, you'd agree with me. Remember moral relativism? Times have changed. Moral relativism. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying to you. So moral relativism doesn't work because Hitler's Germany had moral relativism and they thought it was okay to go kill all the Jews based upon moral relativism. Yeah, but still, if we know that homosexuality also happens in nature, with so, animals. Okay. Do they have you want you want you want to go to that or let's go to that. So you're yeah. saying because animals do this particular action, it should be no, we're using that as a standard for human beings, yeah? Not well, as a standard, but it's like okay. it's not unfamiliar to animals. Animals eat their young. Animals eat their young. Oh. oh. Okay. So should we be eating babies? No. Why not? Animals do it. That's what Animals do incest. Should we be doing it? So, do you realize, no disrespect, but how ridiculous using animals as a source of morality is not the greatest mo source of morality? No, no, no. The point is this. You're using animals as an example of what yeah. they do yeah. to justify human beings' behavior. Yeah. It makes no sense yeah. when you're selecting which behavior. Yeah, that's true, but I do feel like we no, no, but in my paradigm that we're yeah. in, yeah. see, if you want to, if you think we came from animals, yeah. tell me how. I don't know how. But how? Know well, no, but why do you believe we did that? What science? What evolutionary theory? Oh, oh a random mutation and all that. Why do you believe random mutation is a thing? That's been studied. It's not been proven. Randomness, randomness is not even proven. Yeah, everything, sort of everything I've said is proven. All I said is not proven. No, no, no. How did I get to the creator? Yeah, that's proven, but like, we don't know. Okay. No, no, no. We haven't gone to that yet. No, you, you, if you need to go through, don't worry. Don't worry. No, I'll, I'll show. Minutes. All right, all right, all right. All right. Okay. I just want to leave you today with something to think about. Yeah, sure. I'm not expecting you to accept what I'm saying is true. No, but I'm going to leave you with more. I want to leave you with more. I, I, this is this is lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm only here today. I'm I'm from UK. I'm visiting Malaysia. Are you here? I'm with these guys here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a famous YouTuber. Yeah, I heard from him. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm not. Uh, so you you're in good company. All right. So that's just some random. So this is good. This is good for you guys because. You know, I believe there are people out there who need to hear the message. And sometimes you need to hear a message in a way that you may not hear it. Yeah. I don't know who's speaking in Netherlands and such. I don't know. I'm assuming there'll be Moroccans and stuff doing Dawah here. A lot, a lot of, yeah. A lot, a lot of Moroccans. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's go back to my point. All right. So I won't, I'm not going to dig you out, dig into you on your evolution theory because evolution isn't a proven thing. The, the premise is, if Darwin knew about DNA, he would never present evolution. DNA smashes the Darwinian evolution. So as soon as that, if, if Charles Darwin was alive today, and he's like, what? DNA what? There is no Darwinian evolution. Anyway, but I'm not going to go there. Let's fast forward. You've got five minutes. This creator that could potentially exist, how would you, uh, how could we find out the information about why and, you know, this the screen yeah. guidance? Yeah. I first want you to concede. I have to get you to concede this point before we yeah. continue. Yeah. He would be the source, like it or not. Agree with it or not, it don't okay. matter. He would be the standard. Yeah. You'd be wrong against his standard, agreed? Okay. All right, all right. How can we find this information? Where do we get it from? The information we've got. Yeah. Where could we get it from? How could we get it? Uh, each other, or from, for example. The only way 
we could get this information is if the God revealed the information. Yeah, yeah, that's what. I mean. yeah? yeah, revealed the information. Yeah. So no other way. So we don't assume these things. We 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 seek in revelation. Okay. Now God has chosen from history what we've seen yeah. men amongst us to be messengers of His. And throughout history, you'll see many, many messengers making the claim that they're sent by God. 